Look at the spread of the food. It's all plant-based. Can you believe it? Because the population is growing, the need for protein will always be there. So how do we get the protein? It cannot be through normal animal sources anymore. So who's going to fill that gap? We want to create sustainable nutrition for the world. Food is everyone's business. In this series, we'll explore how innovative technologies and local initiatives are rethinking the way we produce and consume food. Welcome to Future Food, where we explore the food production of tomorrow. In this episode, we'll take you behind the scenes to see how healthier food options are being created, enhancing food security and nutrition in Singapore. Today, my search has brought me to Nurasa's Food Tech Innovation Centre. Thanks, Yuling, for inviting us today to have the Nurasa experience. Welcome, Yuling. It is really our pleasure to have you here. Nurasa actually is quite a new company. We launched in 2021, but with big mission for long term and also uh, ambitious uh, goal in terms of how to help the uh, Asia sustainable food. So how did Nurasa come up with the idea of um, creating holistic nutrition? We have uh, formed this uh, collaborative community for like-minded innovators, scientists, researchers, consumer-focused companies to create an ecosystem that allows us to bring the idea to the consumer table quicker and faster. Mm, so it's nutrition of the head, heart and body. Yes. That was <laughs> Very good. Good. So what trends are you seeing in the nutritional needs of Singaporeans and how is Nurasa uniquely positioned to meet those trends? In the Singapore markets, uh, already indicated a high interest for that people looking for sustainable, nutritious, healthy but conveniently produced and packed food for them. We really want to take this opportunity, make sure that consumer will have access to affordable and better for you and yummy food. Hi everyone, so I've got some special friends with me today because good things must share. So I have David here with me, he's the Head of Innovation Delivery at Nurasa and we have a special guest. By now you may think I'm the brains behind this show but really there's someone working really hard behind the scenes. She's our director and producer, Angel! I'm here, in front of the screen. The food has brought me here. So, shall we have a taste test? Yes. And what you have in front of you is exactly the same dish on our official opening that was presented to BPN, Mr. King. Oh, I feel very honoured. Yeah, okay. I feel like eating everything now. Yeah. Yes. So, let's dig in from the congee first. Oh. It looks like mushrooms, but actually it's not, right? It's... I uh, shall not spill the beans out of the bag. Alright. Okay, it tastes like meat, so I'm guessing like it's meat. Mm. It's so yummy. It tastes like duck, but like a lot of mala, got a bit of mala taste. Mm. Spot on. You have got it right. It's mala duck. So this is using our high moisture extrusion, whereby it mimics the fibrous texture of the meat. So uh, it's made mainly using soy. Ingredients. Soy protein. Yeah, and with that, uh, the consumer will be able to get their protein intake. They are fired a really a sustainable angle. It's great that I don't really taste the soy at all. So when it tear open, I thought that it really was like meat. I will eat this instead of duck. Because duck is sometimes way too chewy. I find it very hard to bite, bite through. I think this will solve my um, cognitive dissonance because I love duck on the plate, but also I think they're very cute. So now I don't have to have that morality issue, I can just eat um. Shall we progress to the next dish? Yes, yeah. from malalalala to burrito. <sighs> Very chicken -y. Smells like a fast food joint that I cannot say. Mmm! That is really good. It's um, yeah, chicken. You get Laos, mm -hmm. but you can also get Laos in the sauce. So the flavouring, and this is how we are benchmarking some of the products that mm -hmm. again resonate well with consumers. Can I make this from tofu at home though? No, nope, you'll not be able to because uh, tofu there's a generally solid texture. Mm. You're not able to get the shape, the size of this uh, piece that fits into the pita bread. Mm. So everything is really customized. It's such a great food to eat on set. So if this is affordable, 
and within budget of production, I will definitely get it. Uh, crew, you recording this? Are we ready to travel to another part of the world? Yes, Japan! Yes, yes. and that is Katsu Corridor. Oh, it's so layered. Look at this. Look, can you see? It's like layered, like real chicken thigh. This machine behind me enables product to be made from chicken strips like this to deep fried coated chicken patty like this, which consumer can relate to. So with the better, it looks it looks better. More. Yes, it looks better with the better. Mmm. The ratings just get higher and higher. I would say this is a 9.5 out of 10 for, I mean, the score in terms of being close to what it is. But they were all 10 out of 10 in taste. Well, what you have tasted today is also part of our innovation drive to achieve towards something that is palatable and also something that can be easily replaceable with sustainable food. So from Japan, I'm going to reel you back to Singapore. Can you guess what dish is this? Sotong. It's nasi lemak. <laughs> Sotong nasi lemak. That's okay. blue pea rice. Yes, I know. <laughs> this is such a beautiful display of like colours. Just visually, it's so attractive. I'm poking it and it actually feels like sotong. It is sotong. Why no, it's not. It's from this. Springy. Mmm. Would um, local vendors be able to get, say, meat like that at the same price that they're getting like real sotong or real um, chicken? For sure, if you get the real sotong, it will be definitely more expensive because anything that's considered as seafood, there's always a premium over it. And this is where we make it price parity, where the local consumer can touch on it and get the experience of having like a color into a, a sambal sotong. So if people have an allergy issue with like seafood, are they able to eat this? Absolutely, because there's really no seafood of this. <gasps> but it tastes like yeah. there's seafood. Yeah. yeah. So this is where the magic of food tech happens. What is the feasibility to use such meats for um, hawkers? You can implement it uh, as soon as possible. These products are really available in the market. Oh, are they? Yes. Where can I get um, the, the sotong thingy? I can pass you the contact after this. Oh, great. Wow, so after this, you can just bring home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bring home, you cook, I eat. Okay. Okay. This is my one of my favorite go tos to eat. I love nasi lemak, and then when it's pretty, it's even prettier and nicer to eat, and I love sotong. So, this was a treat for me today. Wow. And with that, we'll move on to our next dish, a national favorite we call laksa. You've got to guess what is this made of? It's tofu, right? Same. Soy. Fudge. Oh! Oh! So if this is made of konjac, does it mean that it has low calorie? It's it low calorie. <gasps> konjac is low calories? Yeah. <gasps> I is it zero that. calories? I know. Oh. And this is good for like if you go on diet since you like <gasps> squid, right? Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Give me the number of the squid guy later. This actually looks like fish. Look at the texture. It looks like it's sliced fish, but it's actually what's like a... Uh, squid. Squid, okay. Mmm. Is this made of konjac? Yes. Okay. It's really good though. It's really and like it's genuine. It's genuinely good. Okay. I'm gonna start expecting you guys can make like vegan oysters. Ooh. Good idea. Or vegan sashimi or something because yes. like the standard has just been raised, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Look at the prawn though. The cross section is actually, it's actually pretty. The cross section. It looks it. Quite but pretty convincing lah. Just don't have the dirt. The what? The intestines. <laughs> She says it's missing the poo poo. <laughs> That's not nice people. <laughs> to be realistic. So, uh, to your point, there's no need for deveining anything. No need for deveining, and people who are allergic to seafood can eat this. So, so many benefits. But it does have this sweetness that seafood usually comes with. Yeah. And because of the colour, it really looks like prawn. Yeah. Yeah. Is this conjac <laughs> again? Yes. Wow, because, I mean, I'm kind of mindful because it becomes. Such a versatile ingredient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it does deliver the satiety that you should food after the taste. Oh, okay. Wow, I better pivot to konjac diet. Mm. Does this have protein in it? Very low. This is more to deliver experience. What can I choose as a non-beef alternative? 
So this concludes our wonderful and very shook tasting experience at the Narasa Food Tech Innovation Center. Well, thank you, David. Thank you. And thank you, Angel, for coming in front of the camera to join me today. And I think we can look forward to experiencing this hopefully in our hawker centers very soon. To learn more about future food, I met with a senior scientist who works at ASTAR and Nurasa's food processing joint lab. Hi there, my name is Yulin. Hi Yulin, I'm Ji Hong. I'm a senior scientist at the food process engineering department in ASTAR CFP. Thanks for having us here today. So what do you think matters most to Singaporeans when we talk about alternative food? Yes, so there are a few key uh, matters that actually affects. So the first one is the taste and texture. For example, in our Singapore Food Story Grand Projects, we actually developed a very popular Asian-based products like siu mai and gyoza. Mm. So these have been subjected to sensory analysis to see whether this taste and texture are meeting uh, the consumer expectations. Mm. So for the second one is affordability. And the third one is actually good nutritional values. Mm. So these plant-based ingredients are also being subjected to uh, metabolic health effects such as understanding the blood glucose where the subjects ingest the product. Thank you for joining us today. From cutting-edge technology to creating healthier food options, Neurasa is significantly contributing to the future of sustainable nutrition in Singapore. Stay tuned for our next episode at Singapore Poly's Future Food Lab. See you next time! Before we start, can we describe the food first? You're yes. too fast, oh, sorry! Ouch. <laughs> I'm Stop playing your food! No, wait, I'm poking I tell your mother. There you go. Arigato. Arigato oh, burrito. Okay, it's all mine. This is mine. This is mine. Did, no. <laughs>